The Al Aqsa compound transformed into a battleground. Just under the Dome of the Rock, Israeli police unleashed clouds of tear gas, deafening and blinding stun grenades. While some Palestinians made their way out, others advanced, throwing stones and bottles at officers, at times coming face to face with security forces. For several days now, the East Jerusalem neighborhood of Shejara has become the center of unrest. After the Ramadan fast ended each evening, protesters took to the streets in solidarity with Palestinian families who face evictions. It's here where Israeli settlers hope to expand their presence. On Friday, Palestinians decided to take their demonstration to the Al-Aqsa compound just after the last Friday prayers of this year's Ramadan. The militant group Hamas, that controls the Gaza Strip, called on protesters to stay at the site until the end of the holy month. The Israeli occupation must realize that the resistance is ready to defend Al-Aqsa at all costs. The U.S., Israel's historic ally, called for de-escalation. The U.N. warned that forced evictions could amount to war crimes. Israel's Supreme Court is set to hold a hearing on the issue next Monday. This is uh, St. Matthew chapter 24, verse 6. Ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences, and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Second Ezra chapter 9 verse 1, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs past which I have told thee before, then thou shalt understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. 
Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then thou shalt well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, even, even so the times also of the highest have plain beginnings and wonder and powerful works and endings and effects and signs. Brakata Yahweh, Brakata Yahweh Shah, Brakata Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, Racha Ha Kwadash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well in sound doctrine and peace to the elect of the nation of Israel. And we're just watching, we're, we're, we're standing upon our watch and we're continuing to watch for the signs of the coming of our Lord, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, and the Savior of the nation of Israel whose name is Yahweh Shah. All right? You know? And, uh, the main sign, as you can see, is the uproars of the people right now. You know, yeah, the uproars in Colombia. I believe the people are protesting the new tax reform laws, as well as the hyperinflation that's been that's been going on in the country. Okay. It's uh, lucky, uh, and all these countries have uh, defiled themselves with the uh, with the ways of Babylon. You know, and that's why the people are mad. It says in Jeremiah, let's go to that in Jeremiah. You know, the people are upset because the people of these other nations have followed the ways of Babylon. Jeremiah 51 verse 7. Babylon have been a golden cup in Yahweh's hand that made all the earth drunken. So all these nations are drunken right now. You know, they've all become drunken off of that Babylon juice. Which are the philosophies of Babylon It says to be or become drunk or be intoxicated So they're not in their right mind They're not in their right mode of of, uh, of operation Because they're operating outside of their natural state You know, the Moabites want to be want to be Americans The Chinese want to be Americans The Ishmaelites, you know, they want to be Ishmael But then again, some of their ways They're bending to the ways of Esau So these nations are mad here it is, you're, you're a Palestinian, you're a Muslim, but you want to dwell in Jerusalem, okay? And here it is, you're supposed to be the, the most high chosen people. You're supposed to be ish, Jewish people, but yet you're allowing Muslims to come into your land and to set up mosque in the Holy Land. This is not the kingdom, okay? When, when the Israelites get back to the Holy Land, the kingdom of heaven will be established. This is not the kingdom of heaven. So these nations... Colombia, they've they've drunk out of the Babylon juice. You know, they, they their kings have done business with Babylon, and therefore the people are mad now because they're realizing that the ways of America are as deaf, and America is not going to save you. America is actually setting you up for the woo. Revelation 18 and 1, and after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Dealing with the destruction that's going to overcome America, this place is going to be turned into a desert with all types of desert creatures. Verse 3, for all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. So these nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, which is the American way, the American philosophies, the equality, the democracy, the homosexuality, the, uh, the science. Okay, all nations have drunk of that wine. And now they're drunk because they're thinking in these various ways. When these ways are all against the ways of the Heavenly Father. So it's like they're drunk. They're not sober. It says, um, that's why the Lord said to, 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 to serve him with a sober mind. Meaning to be pure-minded. To, to not be defiled by the ways of this world. Revelation 18 and 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. You see, so the kings of these various nations have committed fornication and they've been in bed and doing business with America. It says, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. OK. Through that American dollar, which that American dollar was set up to eventually fail. So the, these people that have trusted in that dollar, they're going to fail with it. And that's why some of these countries are trying to switch into their own digital currency. The race for the digital currency is now on because everybody knows that the next world currency is going to be the RFID microchip, which is the mark of the beast. So back here, this word for drunk in Jeremiah chapter 51 and 7, the word there is a... Uh, 
Sh- Shakar. Strong's H7937. Shaher. Shaher. Shakar for drunk. It says to be to be or become drunk or drunken. Be intoxicated. Cause oneself to be drunk. To become tipsy. In a qualified sense to satiate with a stimulating drink or figuratively influence. You see, so these nations have been influenced. They have been influenced by America, by the American way. Okay? Because I guarantee, I don't know for a fact, but I'm pretty sure that Colombia has a democracy. So at one point in time, they had a king, a queen, a prince, a princess, you know? But now they have a democracy because they've drunken of that Babylon juice. It says figuratively influenced. So the, all nations have been influenced by America. It says Jeremiah 51 and 7. Babylon had been a golden cup in Yahweh's hand that made all the earth influenced, okay, or drunken. The nations have drunken of her wine, have been influenced by her wine. Therefore, the nations are mad, okay? So the nations are upset because they've been following a way that was a false way. And they're not necessarily upset with Babylon. They're upset with their kings because their kings have committed fornication with Babylon. So 2 Ezra chapter 9 and verse 1. He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. So we're in a time frame where the heavenly father, the highest of the heaven and earth, is actually visiting the earth which he made his spirit is in the earth and in the heavenly father's spirit is a spirit of division and these israelite camps hate that they hate that the the spirit of yahweh is the spirit of division and it, and it affects all nations luke 12 and 52 including the nation of israel Luke 12 and 51, suppose ye that I am come to give peace on earth, I tell you nay, but rather division. For from henceforth there shall be five and one house divided, three against two and two against three. The sun shall be divided against the, it's like it, the 53, uh, Luke, St. Luke 12, 53. The father shall be divided against the son and the son against the father and the mother against the daughter and the daughter against the mother and the mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. So the Lord is coming to bring straight up division, you know? And so this is all a part of the recompense for the nation of Israel. You know, you Palestinians that are over there in that land, you know, some of you are Israelites, but a lot of you are are heathen and you are the ones you are the ones that sold us into slavery you know so the lord is bringing that recompense upon your own head and and it, and it talked about how the uh, israelis they're they're trying to evict all these people out of the land of israel right now you know and the scripture say that they shall cast them out of their houses let's get that because uh, all this is about the israeli eviction i mean the palestinian evictions so this is that spirit of Esau. It says Proverbs 22 and 27. If thou hast nothing to pay, why should he take away thy bed from under thee? Right. And in this case, these people, they still have the money to pay rent. But Esau is moving people out of different areas of the land, claiming that they don't belong there. Not as though they can't pay their rent. But even if you couldn't pay your rent, should you then should they take your bed also? You know, take your property and your belongings. Because that's what Esau do. He'll take you out the house. But then, let's say you're on the street, you know, and all you got is your car left. He'll come and take your car. And then all you got is your clothes. He'll, he'll come and take your clothes. He'll sue you out of everything you got. He'll sue you down to your socks. Because this is the devil. Second Ezra 16. Let's go down here. Verse 68, for behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, and they shall take away certain of you, and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. And they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. Yeah, that's talking about being served that chip in them concentration camps, being idle in them concentration camps. They're going to try to serve you that chip. 
they're gonna uh, try to re-educate you. They're called re-education camps. They had the blue list, the red list, and I think this the yellow list. The red list are the ones that can't be can't be conformed. They're gonna be put to death, which would be people like us. The blue list are the people that can be uh, the people that are um, followers of the system, and I think the yellow list are those that will have to be re-educated. You know, the ones that they believe can be re-educated. But anyway, those that consent unto them in those in, on that yellow list, they're gonna be had in derision and they're gonna be killed. Because Esau don't need, though he's trying to chip the whole world, he's not going to keep the whole world. He only needs a small number of slaves to continue the society, so he believes. Second chapter 16 and 70, For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. They shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses. You see? So this is a part of the prophecies. That's going to befall the whole world. Remember, to try them that dwell upon the earth. Remember, Israelites are going to look like all nations. So you have some Israelites over there that are calling themselves Palestinian. You know, they may or may not be the elect, but they're going to suffer these prophecies. Okay, and all these things that you see going on over there is going to be, uh, it's going to come on over here. You know, and this is nothing but pressure from above and pressure below pressure from above and pressure below that's what Esau wants to do Joel chapter 3 and verse 4 yeah what have you to do with me O Tyre and Zidon and all the coast of Palestine will ye render me a recompense and if ye recompense me swiftly and speedily will I return your recompense upon your own head because ye have taken my silver and my gold and carried into your temples my goodly pleasant things. The children also of Judah and the children of Jerusalem have ye sold unto the Grecians, that they might, that ye might remove them far from their borders. And then once they removed us from, from our own borders, they moved into our borders. They moved into our land. You know? And claim that 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 that, that is theirs. You know, so this is this is uh, according to the prophecies, man, the uproars of the people, the insurrections, you know, and this is going to lead, this is not going to lead to, but this is um, the signs of the coming of our Lord. It is going to lead to the coming of our Lord, but it's not the sole thing that's going to lead to the coming of our Lord. This is just one of the signs to, that we can tell and show you that Yahweh Shah is on the way. You know, Yahweh Shah is on the way to take us up out of this flesh and give us immortal bodies, you know, to put us back in immortality. So call hello yum la yahaw ba shimmy al shah for that. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 15. For the sword and their destruction draw nigh, and one people shall stand up and fight against another, and swords in their hand. The modern day sword is the gun, the nuclear missile, rocks, shoes, whatever they decide to throw and, and use as weapons against each other. Okay? It says, For there shall be sedition among men. Sedition is uprising against an authority or a government. For there shall be sedition among men and invading one another. They shall not regard their kings nor princes, and the course of their actions shall stand in their power. Verse 18. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled, the houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. You see? So this is what's going on in the planet Earth because Yahweh Shai is on his way. These are the birth pains. You know, so real quick, I just wanted to report that. Lord, when this is edifying, brother Yaquam, Kwam Yashara, Shalom.